Good morning. This morning we will be having communion at the rail and you will be receiving the wafer and the little cup of wine. If you have decided that you would prefer to stay in the pew, you will have, hopefully you picked up the little all-in-one cup and wafer and you will take the wafer and the liquid in the cup as we are communing at the rail. This is, continues to be teachings of Jesus in our lessons today, this is a very familiar story of the unfruitful fig tree and how Jesus saves it from being cut down. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, 
We confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us, forgive us, and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. be with you. with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. To those who've experienced long years in exile, the return to their homeland is a celebration of abundant life. God calls them into an everlasting covenant of love. Those who return to God will enjoy new life and forgiveness because God's ways are not our ways. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content, as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. And I remember you on my bed, and meditate on you when I watch. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul uses images from Hebrew scriptures and prophecy to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. He is our rock, our water, our food, and our drink. Christ is the living son, sign of God's faithfulness. <clears throat> I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Ask about current tragic events. Jesus turns a lesson about whether suffering is deserved into a heart call to obedience. He then tells a parable that holds out hope that the timeline for ultimate judgment will be tempered by patience. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Of those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. When I read today's Gospel, I read how death can be a living death, that is, life without Jesus. Have you ever thought of yourself without the presence of Jesus, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, without the watchfulness of God? Jesus says, unless you repent, you, we, will all perish as the Galileans did as well as those on whom the Tower of Siloam fell. Well, just what does that mean? We all die in all ways and means, accidents, disease, age. We all perish. Jesus does not mean that we will all perish because the Tower of Siloam fell on us. He means we will all perish. Yet, could what Jesus said also mean we will all die within ourselves now as if crushed unless we have Jesus in our lives? When I think of my life, there is no life without the presence of Jesus, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the companionship of God. Without Jesus... What there is, is fear, loneliness, desolation, desperation. This is what the presence of Jesus does. It has been said about this parable that Jesus tells his followers that we are the fig tree. We are the ones, when not nourished and fed with the gospel and the presence of Jesus, we are dying. Our soul is not nourished, not nourished by God's grace. The well-known theologian, Nadia Bowles Weber, puts it this way. God's grace is not just defined as God being forgiven, forgiving to us even though we sin. Grace is when God is a source of our wholeness. Oftentimes, it just takes a thought, doesn't it, to be renewed in God's grace. We know when we are not being nourished by God's grace. Jesus points out to the crowd that they were not being nourished by God's grace because of their criticisms and judgments. God's grace comes through God's love and mercy, not through judgments and ridicule. The fig tree was dying because it had not been cared for. It had not been nourished, trimmed. It had become a life unto itself, and it was becoming a nothing. And that is the point, is it not? 
I have an evangelical Lutheran Church in America calendar hanging just beside my computer screen in the office. So I see the picture for the month many times during the day. The picture this month is a picture of the prodigal son being embraced by his father when the son returns home. Are you looking at that picture? Can you see it? You remember the dramatic story. The father each day looks and looks for his son who left. He left to have a life on his own, not to be nourished by his family, friends, or especially God. The son eventually turns around and realizes he left what he needed, love and belonging from those who loved him most. So one day, the father sees his son in the distance. The father starts running, and when he meets up with his son, he grabs him, both arms completely around him, holding on to him, kissing him. That is what returning into God's grace is. Being held, embraced, kissed, loved in the arms of God. Some of you I know and I have read of others who each morning at rising says a prayer. And at the end of the day, you do so also. So you are saying that you cannot and will not live without the sense of God's grace. God's presence in your life. You are saying what Nadia Bowles Weber says. God's grace is not just defined as God being forgiving to us, even though we sin. Grace is when God is a source of wholeness, which makes up for my failings. Jesus says, unless we repent, we will not experience that wholeness of God's grace. Repentance, as you know, is simply a continual sense of God's presence in our lives, turning away from that which turns us from God. Is this not what our gospel says today? The fig tree was neglected. It was not nourished. The owner was ready to cut it down, but the gardener said no, give it a chance. I will water it. I'll nourish it. It will live. I'll leave it for your speculation as to who is the owner who wanted to cut down the tree. But without a doubt, we know we are the fig tree. And thankfully, God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, is our very caring gardener.
confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we keep Denny's brother, Paul, who's in the hospital and will be having bypass surgery. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, and deaconesses, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, for the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change, merciful God, receive our prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God, for those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, especially those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Please join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, 
but with words of grace and light. Bless us and these gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness into the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ in the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. With your holy ones at all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled.
Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Can you tell it's been a while since we've had communion together? <laughs> Carrie kept saying, no, do this. No, go there. No, you should be here. <laughs> Our mission is this month is the network, Welcome Network. It's in your bulletin. Uh, it's to help resettle the Afghan refugees. So please read about that and give accordingly if you can. Wednesday meals are to be continue to be picked up between 5 and 5.30, and we do begin our in-house worship at 7 o'clock this Wednesday. Uh, Love, Inc. is in need of slightly used pillows, so I think you would bring them here or may bring them. Can they take them to Love, Inc., too, if they want, or just here? Bring them. Okay. Okay. So if you have slightly used pillows, not the kind that you beat to death every night <laughs> or plump up and then stretch out but one slightly used so that will be your determination <laughs> but they do need them for uh, giving to those who don't need don't have a pillow uh, we need volunteers to serve meals at the Hammond Rescue Mission on April 1st and 6th that's a Friday and a Saturday and you would meet here at 1115 and lastly uh, Loretta reminds us that uh, we need to turn in our Easter flower orders, and there's forms, I believe, in the bulletin. So, please stand. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always.
Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.